Hello friends, hope all you are fine and doing well. Welcome to our channel SR HVAC. In today's video, we will study how to select the chill water pipe sizing. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. So you never miss an update on the latest industry insights, tips and tutorials. So, let's get started. What is chilled water pipe sizing? First, let's understand what chilled water pipe sizing is. In HVAC systems, chilled water is used to cool the air in buildings. The pipes that carry this chilled water need to be sized correctly to ensure efficient cooling and energy use. Incorrect pipe sizing can lead to issues like inadequate cooling, increased energy consumption, and higher operational costs. There are two ways of selecting the chilled water pipe size, number one, by using the pipe friction loss chart, and number two, by using the McQuarrie software. We have two FCUS FC1 and FC2 having capacity 4 and 5 TR, and 30 tons capacity of 1 AHU with high wall of 2 TR. Having all four equipment are connected by a chilled water piping network supplying at 44 degree Fahrenheit, and the chilled water return at 54 degree Fahrenheit, we need to select the chilled water pipe sizing for this network. Either by friction law chart or Macquay software, we need to know the GPM for these equipments. For the calculation of GPM for AHU and CU, we have the formula GPM equal to ton of refrigeration into 24 divided by delta T, where delta T is the difference of temperature between chilled water return and chilled water supply in degree Fahrenheit. Us. We know the capacity of CU high wall and AHU in ton of refrigeration. So we will apply this value in this formula, and we will calculate the GPM for these CU and AHU as we know the capacity for WHO1 is 30 tons. When we apply this value in the formula, 30 into 24 divided by delta, which is equal to 10, 54 minus 44 equal to 10 then, we get the GPM for the AHU1 is 72 GPM. In the same way for CU1, we have the capacity 4 tons. When we apply this value 4 into 24 divided by 10, we get the GPM for FC1 equal to 9.6. Similarly, for CO2, we have the capacity of 5 tons. When we apply this value in the formula 5 into 24 divided by 10, then we get the GPM for CO2 equal to 12.0. The GPM for a plus B segment will be equal to the GPM of CO and AHU. In this case, it will be the sum of GPM of C1 plus the GPM of O1, and it will be equal to 72 plus 9.6, and the total will be 81.6. GPM similarly, the GPM A plus B plus C segment, it will be equal to the GPM of AHU plus C plus FCU2, which will be 81.6 plus 12 GPM. So we get 93.6 GPM, and for high wall it will be, equal to the GPM of FC1 plus the GPM of AHU plus the GPM of C2 plus 4.8 of high wall, and it will be equal to 93.6 plus 4.8 plus and the total will be 98.4 GPM for selection of pipe size for any chill water piping network. We need to follow these rules as per ASHRAE standards number 1 for pipe size 2 inch or any smaller, a velocity limit of 4 feet per second will be followed. For pipe size greater than 2 inch, a pressure drop limit of 4 feet, water gauge per 100 feet, need to follow, as per carrier recommendations. The velocity should not exceed to 4.6 meter per second, or 15 feet per second in any case. When we are selecting the pipe size for any chill water piping network, and our pipe is coming 2 inch or smaller, then we will select the pipe, following a velocity limit of 4 feet per second. But if our pipe is coming greater than 2 inch, then, we will select our pipe, following a pressure drop limit of 4 feet water gauge per 100 feet. We will select the pipe size by carrier friction law chart, for a closed piping, for a steel pipe offset rule 40, and we will confirm the result by Macquarie software also. We have drawn a green line at the velocity of 4 fps as our apps, due to have the GPM 72.0. So we have drawn a blue color line at the GPM 72. Then you can see these two lines are intersecting at a pipe size of 2 and a half inch, which is greater than 2 inch. So now we will have to follow the friction loss limit. This velocity limit is not applicable here. Now to select the pipe size for a HU of 72 GPM, we have drawn a blue color line for a GPM value of 72. 
We have drawn a green line on 4 feet of water per 100 feet limit. Then you can see these two lines are intersecting after the pipe size of 2 inch, so we will select the next pipe size that is 2 and a half inch now. We will confirm this pipe sizing for AHU having 72 GPM in Mercury software. So let us select the pipe size of 2 and a half inch. You can see it is 3.89, which is less than 4 feet water gauge per 100 feet. Next is our FCU one. So we have drawn a blue color line at the GPM 9.6 and we have drawn a green line at the velocity of 4 FPS now. We will find where these two lines are intersecting. You can see these two lines are intersecting after the pipe size line of 3-4 inch. So we will select the next pipe size that is 1 inch. At this 1 inch coming below 2 inch pipe size. So we will select the pipe size for the GPA following the velocity limit method. Now. We will confirm this pipe size by McQuay software. Let us select the pipe size 3-4 inch and the GPM 9.6. Then you can see the fluid velocity is coming more than 5.78 feet per second. Then we will go for the next pipe size 1 inch and we will put the GPM 9.6. Then you can see the fluid velocity is coming 3.56 feet per second that is coming less than 4 FPS. So we will select the pipe size of 1 inch for the GPM 9.6. Now we will select the pipe size for CO2 velocity 4 FPS as current line at the value of 12 GPM. These two lines are intersecting after the pipe size 1 inch. So we will select the next pipe size that is 1 and quarter inch. And this pipe size value is the pipe size for CO2 following the velocity limit method. Let us confirm this pipe size by McQuarrie software for CO2. Let us select the pipe diameter 1 inch and here. We will put the GPM value of 12. Then you can see the fluid village velocity is coming 4.45. That is more than for limit. So we will go for the next size and we will select one and quarter in pipe size for 12 GPM. Then you can see the fluid velocity 2.57, which is less than 4 FPS velocity limit. So we will select the pipe one and quarter inch for a 12 GPM value. Now we do the pipe size 0.8 GPM again. We have drawn a green line for FPS velocity limit and a blue color line at 4.8 GPM. Then you can see these two lines are intersecting at a pipe size of 3 8 inch now. We'll confirm this pipe size for with McQuay software. You can see that is coming 2.89, which is okay. Now we see the header line segment having 81.6 GPM. We select a pipe size of 2.5 inch. You can see that 4.92 is coming, which is not accepted so. We will select the pipe of 3 inch and let us put the value of GPM 81.6. Then you can see the head loss is 2.53 which is less than 4. That is now we will select the size for second segment having 93.6 GPM. We have drawn a blue color line at 93.6 GPM value. And we have drawn a green line at 4 feet of water per 100 feet friction loss. You can see these two lines are intersecting each other after a pipe size of 2.5 inch. So we will select the next pipe size that is 3 inch. Let us now confirm the pipe size for segment 2 having GPM 93.6 by McQuay software. Let us select 2.5 inch and put the GPM value 93.6. Then you can see the head loss is coming 6.36 which is more than the limit of 4 feet of water per 100 feet. Then we will select the next pipe size which is 3 inch. And we'll put the 93.6 GPM here. Then you can see the head loss is coming 2.15. Which is less than the maximum limit of 4 feet of water per 100 feet. So we will select a pipe of 3 inch for 93.6 GPM. So in this way, following this rule, with the help of carrier friction, low chart or McQuay software, you can select the pipe size for any GPM for a chill water piping network. Friends, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We have a lot more informative content coming your way. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.